goodness, look at all these ducks. That is not okay. Wow. Oh my goodness. If they decoy in front of our face, it's gonna be amazing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yo, yo, yo! What up guys and welcome back to another one! I'm glad you are all back and I have a very requested video for y'all today. On this lovely foul Friday. But oh, real quick, look at the new ducks tanks! Oh my! If you want one of these bad boys, I will link them down below. But as I was saying, one of the most requested videos that I've had down in the comments, you guys, I've been asking you guys, you guys have been doing a heck of a job. I gotta give it to you guys. You guys are pulling through every single time when I'm like, hey, go drop a comment down below. I'm asking for you guys' ideas on videos and what you guys want me to do. And this was one of the most requested one in the last couple months by far. So, what am I talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about all my beginner duck hunters out there. What do you actually need? What do you need for your beginner duck spread? I mean, what's vital? Vital. Not overkill, not 20 dozen freaking floater ducks, nothing like that, no big spreads, but what's actually needed? So today, it's gonna be all water-based, all, all marsh hunting, public water hunting. That's what we're gonna be talking about. <sighs> I like doing these sit-down videos. I miss doing them in the old shop with the stove going, but it, like I said in the last video, it's just way too hot for that. Here, this Kansas humidity is bad. But first of all, what is needed? What do you need to buy first for your first water duck decoy spread? Well, first of all, it's not a mojo. Do not buy a mojo the first thing you buy. You know, you already have your gun, you got your hunting license, you got your ammo, you got your call, you got all that. But when it comes to decoys, do not buy this guy first. You need to get you some decoys. Now, a dozen is all you really need, guys. When you're started, a dozen, that's all you need. It's just what you got in that dozen. So when I'm going public water hunting, public marshes, pu public wetlands, anything like that, I grab these right here. This is my go-to rig, 12 decoys right here. A dozen is all I need. Oh, nice. We got a train coming. Perfect for videoing. Well, before I was rudely interrupted by the freight train, it's all about what you got in your dozen. So what I got here is, check it out, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, so half a dozen teal. I have six teal decoys in my dozen. That's the first thing, because here in Kansas, what I'm getting at, you want to naturally match the hatch. So. Scouting is always required, guys. Even though it's public and you know where you're going, what hole you're gonna be going to, you gotta scout it. When you walk up on there and you scare them birds off, when you're scouting it, like the day or day, two days before you're gonna hunt it, remember what you scared off. Look at the birds that were on there, and down here, there's always gonna be teal around, all the time. So, six teal decoys are in my dozen. I've done some uh, modifications to my dozen here, my primary dozen, let's call it the dirty dozen. But all I have is three green heads. Three green heads, that's it. We get green heads here, but it's like mid to late December when we really see the piles of green heads come around. So then, this is my modification. It did have three hen mallards as well, but a lot of my old subscribers, you guys remember what I did with two of them, I turned them into coots. So, my idea is coot, confidence decoy. We've always heard of confidence decoys. You know, you know, some people will throw out a couple goose floaters in their public spreads. Just give some realistic look to it. That's what I was thinking with the coots. Here down in Kansas, you're always seeing coots everywhere. So if you want to shoot the coots, come to Kansas. They're freaking everywhere. But, like I said, I only have the one hen on here now. The, all three of these used to be hens, but I went and started spray painting them, so, yeah. So, quantity, I also talk about matching the hatch. If you walk up and there's a dozen ducks on your pond or your marsh, your public area that you're going in the morning, you don't have to put out three dozen. 
all you got to do naturally match the hatch. Now, I do prefer you, you know, get more than a dozen floaters. I think I have three dozen floaters total. So that's it. I know I don't need more personally. I don't need more than three dozen floaters at any given time because you just don't need that many duck floaters, guys. You really don't. So after you got your decoys bought, you do want to go buy a spinning mojo or lucky duck whichever one you want there's some there's a couple different brands out there but i've always ran mojo i think i've went through about 10 of them in uh the last 13 years uh yeah they tend to go out but um some of them are cheap you can get the baby ones you can get the big ones there's a big price difference so go look around for them you can get them on amazon pretty cheap as well if you want any of these decoys i'll actually link it down below well, I'll actually link some pretty good deals that I found, so go check that out. But, a mojo. Here's my idea on the mojo, guys. If you're not using the mojo to decoy birds. A mojo is used for sight, for far away to get their attention. So, what I'm getting at is if you go scout and you got thousands upon thousands of teal or hundreds upon hundreds of teal or ducks or whatever on this one marsh or this one little area, you may not need a mojo. A mojo to me is used to get birds attention. So to me, I use the mojo, I only use one. That's all I ever use, that's all I ever plan on using. Now, the field is different. Whenever we're wanting to shoot ducks in the field, all, literally all I do is bring out this one mojo, I sit it in my goose spread, have it going. I don't use duck decoys in the field, never really have. I think last year I used full body ducks one time in the field, if that tells you anything. So, a mojo in goose decoys in the field is gold. But for the most part, guys, this needs to be your last decoy buy. Make sure you have a good laydown blind. Make sure you have your decoys. This mojo, they're great. Don't get me wrong. They're awesome. They do their job. They, they draw attention. But I'm not saying that you need one right off the get-go. Now, mojos come into effect when you're hunting public marshes and everybody's got them every yada 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 this and that the only th the, what i've seen work guys i'm trying to get trying to find my words here the one thing that works is if there's three four groups hunting on a small body like a small wetland a small marsh you can use two to three of these bad boys put two of them up high and one down low in the kill hole make sure they're always landing into the wind guys again make it realistic and if you start seeing birds come in and they see that mojo and they start flaring, pull it. Pull your mojo. <clears throat> I've been on a ton of hunts, a ton of hunts, where I've yanked the mojo out and we start killing them. So, it's always just try to read the birds, what they want. I can tell you one thing on beginner duck hunting with this little setup, this little scenario, over calling is horrible. Pull back on the calling. You just want to do a couple quacks to get their attention, a little bit of feeder chuckle, if they're locked up and doing it, don't call no more. Let them commit. Let them come and do it themselves. If you guys have ever watched ducks, you know, without scaring them, but just watched them naturally feeding and, and swimming in the water, they're not very loud. It's not like geese. It's not like cacklers and lessers where they're just going blah, 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 blah. They're, they're not very loud. So always try to do your scouting. Always try to pay attention to the ducks. What's on your wetlands what you're going to be hunting and what you're trying to match guys it's very important out of just a small example from last year uh, you guys can go back and watch some of my public hunts i went opening day on some marshes now let me tell you what opening day on public land you all have been there it becomes a war zone and let me tell you there was every tom dick and harry out there just just going nuts on the call and I can tell you we were one of the first groups to walk out that morning because we had limited out and why was it we had one mojo a dozen and a half decoys three guys and I don't think we ever called one time be natural guys natural 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 think about it P opening day or just on a busy weekend at a public area Everybody's calling, quacking their butts off when a group of birds sees and hears, hey, this is quiet over here. That looks realistic. Where are they going to go? Man, I'm telling you what. I'm so sick of summer. I love summer because we get to go swim with the kids, and it's a bunch of fun, don't get me wrong. But it's hot. I'm ready for hoodies again. Who all here watching right now 
is ready for some freaking hoodie weather. Goodness. I know I am. Oh, oh, and by the way, before I forget, on my Instagram, go follow me here. Today I just posted a picture and I'm doing a 20,000, 20K giveaway, baby. So if you have not followed me on Instagram, jump over there, go enter the drawing. The post gives you all the information of how to enter. I'm giving away a Ducks prize pack, so you don't want to miss it. Be sure to go over there, follow myself, enter the drawing. Drawing will be Sunday, so heads up. But guys, this is my go-to duck spread. The one that I grab out of the shop every time when I'm headed out of the door in the early morning. It's just hanging there. I have it hung up. I have my mojo sitting beside it. Psh, out the door I go. Public duck hunting, duck hunting in general on water, is a ton cheaper when it comes to decoys, guys. Goose hunting is expensive. So, so all my beginner duck hunters out there, here is a tribute to show you that this is what I use. This is it. It doesn't take a bunch of money. You don't have to overthink it. You don't have to have a bigger, badder spread than the guy next to you. It's all about being natural, guys. And natural usually doesn't take a bunch of money, especially in duck hunting. Goose hunting, it's all about numbers. It's all about numbers. So the more geese, the better likelihood you're gonna be able to draw them in, decoy them, and uh, pile them up. But ducks, it's a whole different game, guys, especially over water. Honestly, guys, these decoys are from Walmart. I didn't spend a bunch of money buying expensive decoys because I knew that I was gonna be dragging them through mucky, mucky, nasty conditions and marshes and dragging them for up to a mile at a time on my back, clanking them around. I didn't wanna go buy expensive decoys. So those decoys I actually bought a couple years back and they were cheap. You don't have to have the most expensive and the best of everything. You just don't. Especially with duck hunting, guys. Serious. But to kind of go over and recap some of the important things that we went over today, it's diversity of spread. That's why I have teal, I got some green heads, I got some hens, and I got some coots. Now everybody don't run coots. Last year it was kind of a confidence, uh, confidence duck decoy video idea I had and we're still gonna run them this year. I'm not taking the coots out of the decoy spread guys. I'm telling you right now they're gonna stay in the decoy spread and we're gonna smoke some ducks over them bad boys. I'm telling you. Last year we did I think I got one or two videos on public uh, public duck hunts with the coot decoys but we're gonna do it again this year and it's gonna be a good time let me tell you. I, I hope you all stick around for the public vi videos. There's gonna be a lot of good information in my public duck hunting videos this year. There's a lot that I know I need to concentrate on and, and show you guys. You guys love the infield on hunt tips. So one thing I can tell you guys is that's what we're gonna really dedicate a lot of time is when we're hunting. I'm gonna be giving you guys tips upon tips upon tips upon tips because I know that's what you guys love and I, I, I know that's why you're here. So, so I wanna help all my beginners out and keep you guys fresh, keep you learning, speed your learning process up. That's why the channel's here. If you appreciate it, drop a big old thumbs up for your boy right now. Remember to always drop your comments down below. If you're watching this video right now and you're like, oh dude, he didn't hit this enough or he needs to teach me this or I don't know that. Drop your comments down below and let me know what you guys wanna see. That's how I'm gonna keep these how-to videos cranking. And I mean cranking. But that's my appreciation to all my viewers and my subs out there. Thank you for always supporting me by purchasing duck stuff. That You know it goes directly to keeping the channel growing and keeping content coming your way. Thank you guys. But subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching y'all from the bottom of my heart. I truly appreciate it. Peace.